With evacuation orders now in effect, Consulate Kanto destroyed all remaining classified documents and equipment, including the codes. The LCMs were loaded, but the Vietnamese crews had literally jumped ship. Fortunately, Mac McNamara had been in the Navy and the Merchant Marines and was able to pilot the craft. There were some 300 Vietnamese and 18 Americans on three boats. About seven miles downstream, some South Vietnamese Navy boats approached and started firing a machine gun volley over the bow of the leading LCM. McNamara gave the order to stop, especially since there was no way to outrun or outgun them. The lieutenant of the flotilla said they were uh, to bring back the boats to Canto to check for deserters. Unbeknownst to McNamara, a senior Vietnamese Air Force colonel had snuck on board. If they had handed him over, then the flotilla would have insisted on inspecting all the boats, which would have endangered the other men of draft age. Fortunately, two weeks earlier, McNamara had helped the family of Commander Tong to evacuate, who then promised to help if necessary. McNamara told the flotilla lieutenant to contact Tong, which he did. After an hour and a half of nervous waiting, Tong arrived and greeted McNamara warmly. Tong asked, You don't have any military-age males on these boats, do you? McNamara replied, Of course not. Tong then said there would be no reason to return to Kanto. Tong had smartly brought along a young officer whose aged father was on one of the boats. They were both able to say goodbye for the last time. About 45 minutes after this episode, the boats were fired on again by North Vietnamese rockets. McNamara then ordered the Marines to go full throttle and return fire. They were able to put up such a volume of fire that the North Vietnamese decided to just leave them alone. A few hours later, they passed through some of the narrowest parts of the Mekong, where the Viet Cong liked to ambush boats from both banks. As everyone waited nervously, it started to rain. A lot. That helped, as the Viet Cong apparently didn't like waiting out in the rain either. Finally, around 7 in the evening, they reached the mouth of the river. However, the naval ship that was supposed to rescue them wasn't there. They looked for several hours, and still nothing. Just as they were about to give up hope, in the distance they spotted the light of the Pioneer Contender. The crew of that vessel finally let them on board, after they were able to ascertain that it wasn't a trap. McNamara later learned the naval vessel never, never came, they had heard McNamara's distress call, but didn't respond because of communication security. McNamara's crew were the only people coming out of Vietnam who weren't beaten down and depressed like others, but were relatively upbeat. They did what they had planned to do and gotten out their people safely. McNamara's incredible adventure was the subject of the documentary Last Days in Vietnam.